Starting with the evaluation, we look at many different things. With the female, we look at infertility, um, in particular ovulation or anovulation, the lack of ovulation. And I'll be going through this in more detail later, but I will read through this. Polycystic ovary syndrome, disease, those names may be changing later on. There is a large group in the infertility world that are trying to link polycystic ovarian syndrome to a condition called metabolic syndrome. They feel that it is a continuum between the two. But currently, polycystic ovarian syndrome is something that we commonly see, and I am sure that you also see it. And, and with that, we'll go into more detail, but it's uh, regarding not ovulating or ovulating infrequently. Adrenal, adrenal hyperplasia, the adrenal gland, can also cause the ovary not to ovulate. The adrenal gland is important for your stress hormones, and it makes sense that if the body feels that it is stressed, that it is not smart for the body to get pregnant. So the body will take care of itself by not ovulating. Another reason is Cushing's. Cushing's is another form of an adrenal problem. Same idea. The body is saying that this is not a good time to get pregnant. And all these conditions that I'm talking about today can all be addressed and treated with Western medicine. Again, I'm very interested in your approach and things that we can do perhaps that do not uh, require the medication. The treatments for adrenal hyperplasia and Cushing's require prednisone or steroids, which have horrible side effects. Uh, osteoporosis, <coughs> immune facies, uh, stria, many medical complications down the road. So I think the more that we integrate our treatments together, the more this will help our patients. Hypothalamic amenorrhea is where the brain, again, up, up top in the hypothalamus is saying that now's not a good time to get pregnant. We will be going into this in much more detail. And lastly, ovarian failure. Ovarian failure can occur at any age. Someone may not even go through puberty because their ovaries aren't working. Or they may just go through puberty and then their ovaries fail. The next area would be pelvic factors. And um, I always joke with my patients and I say it has to do with the plumbing in the house. So if the fallopian tubes can't pick up an egg because they're blocked or they are not able to transfer the egg or embryo down the tube to the uterus, then they're not going to get pregnant. Or if they get pregnant, they may have a higher risk of a tubal pregnancy. So the tube is extremely important both in terms of egg pickup, fertilization, and transfer of the embryo down into the uterus. It takes a total of seven days from the time that the tube picks up the egg Fertilization occurs in the distal end of the tube, transfer of the embryo to the uterus to get to implantation. So any type of problem there will serve either to lower the pregnancy rate or increase the tubal, tubal pregnancy rate. Um, other areas, cervical mucus, if it's hostile, the sperm can't get through. Uh, you can have different abnormalities within the uterus itself polyps, fibroids, scar tissue, and uterine abnormalities, all of which will cause implantation problems in the uterus. Serves like an IUD to either prevent implantation or compromise implantation so that there is a higher risk of miscarriage once someone is successful at achieving a pregnancy. Um, and then we already talked about the fallopian tubes. Looking briefly at male infertility, there are many causes, but testicular failure can involve the male chromosomes. If the chromosomes aren't right, a man may look normal, but in fact the blueprint, the genetic makeup, is not, and as a result, he may have no sperm or very few sperm. This can occur on the chromosomes themselves meaning that there's an extra chromosome, one of them being Klinefelter's, where there's an X and um, too many of the genetic chromosomes, uh, or microdeletions on the Y chromosome, where there's a point mutation right on that Y chromosome, or a deletion, and is at such an important place on that Y chromosome that it produces a low sperm count or no sperm count. 
There are tests for all of these things, so we can actually find out. But just letting you know, a lot of the men don't want to know if they have a micro deletion. They feel fine. They are happily married. They want to have a family. And technology is such that we can overcome this problem now with in vitro fertilization. So if there's truly no other problems other than the uh, low sperm count or azospermia, which I'll get into later, men choose to try to do the in vitro process and just go around this problem. The other area is infection, prostate infections. You will see white blood cells in the seminal fluid. That's a very hostile environment because white blood cells are releasing chemicals to kill bacteria. Therefore, you can imagine if there are toxic chemicals in the seminal fluid that is going to compromise the sperm as well. Um, it can bind them. The antibodies can actually bind them so they can't move. Or they can just make them where they're not as functional, so there's a lower chance of fertilization. Environmental. Marijuana, smoking, caffeine, and also stress. I am actually seeing more and more thank you, men that are stressed with their work environment. And when they change their work environment, their sperm count does, in fact, improve. So while we always know in women that stress has played a factor with perhaps not ovulating or higher risk of miscarriage, I think it's downplays template in the men and uh, so that needs to be looked at much more carefully and the man needs to be addressed not just the woman in terms of their success rate.